So let's talk about molarity. Um, molarity is a way to express a concentration. There are lots and lots of ways to express how concentrated a solution is. You could use percentages, parts per million, parts per billion, parts per hundred. Those are all ways that you may have heard before when someone is trying to express a concentration. And by concentration, really we're just looking at how much stuff is dissolved in how much stuff. How much solute is dissolved in a certain amount of solution or how much stuff are you dissolving per a certain amount of solvent. So um, some of you may have had some experience with this before, but I'm going to go through this lesson for someone who has never seen molarity and just give you the basics. So the symbol for molarity is a big capital M, uppercase. I always tell my students it's a pointy M, comes to a point on the top, not like a McDonald's M, you know, that's rounded on top. That's actually important because we use M for several things in chemistry. And molarity is simply the moles of solute divided by the liters of total solution. And the way we write this when we're actually just doing our math is molarity equals mole per liter. Now, when you get an answer, or perhaps maybe you are in the lab and you see a bottle that's labeled, you may see a label that looks like this, 2.0 big capital M NACL. We would say this as 2.0 molar, molar is the word we use, sodium chloride. So we would say that is 2.0 molar sodium chloride. Um, here's another example. You would read this as 0.5 molar lithium hydroxide. So when you see that capital M on a label or as a unit in an answer, the word that comes out of your mouth is molar. So when you hear that, we're referring to molarity. Now, um, if you're a chemistry student in high school, you probably have been provided with a reference table packet that actually has this formula in it. This is a pretty common thing to see for entry-level chemistry, and I mean, that just tells you everything. Molarity is moles of solute per liter of solution. They even tell you over here at the side that the big M is molarity, and they give you all that information. Um, this reference table packet it, came from, um, this is from North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, but lots of high school chemistry students probably have one of these in their possession. So let's just look a little more at some of the basics of molarity before we actually get into some problems. So um, just to review, the solute is what is dissolved. That is the substance you are taking and dissolving usually in water, but water's the universal solvent. That means it's just very common, but it doesn't have to be water. Um, the solvent is what you are dissolving the solute in. And when you put the solute in the solvent, what results is the solution. So a solution is basically something that is dissolved in something else. That's a really good way to look at it. So when we look at molarity, we're looking at how much solute is dissolved in the total amount of solution. If you um, later in another chemistry course learn about molality, that's a little different. So that's very important that it's solute per total solution. For example, if I had 20 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 100 grams of water, the solute would be the NaCl, that's what I'm dissolving, and the solvent would be the 100 grams of H2O. <clears throat> so now let's go and um, look at just a little bit more information, and then we're going to get into the problems. So think about it this way. Molarity is moles divided by liter. Moles is what's dissolved. Liters is the total volume of the solution. Molarity is a way to express concentration. And one more thing worth mentioning, sometimes you'll have a problem that may give you molarity and maybe they want you to find volume or maybe they give you volume and molarity and they want you to find moles or grams. So it's important to know that you can algebraically rearrange this formula for molarity. And I just use basic algebra here to solve for moles and also to solve for liters. So when we do these problems, you should expect to use maybe a variety of these. It's not always just molarity as mole per liter. If you're actually using this hands-on in a lab, you may be looking for something else. And speaking of that, 
the main place that a beginning chemistry student is going to need to actually apply molarity to a problem is going to be in acid-base chemistry because we use molarity to describe the um, concentration of acids and bases, and that's what we actually base the math on when we're finding things like pH, pOH, um, concentrations of other things, and when we're doing titration problems. So molarity is very important for a variety of reasons, and in chemistry, you'll see this again. So that said, let's just jump in and start doing some problems. These are very easy to do. Those of you who just finished up stoichiometry, this is going to be a treat because it's just so easy and quick. You're, um, this will be a little bit of a brain break for some of you for sure. So if three moles of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in one and a half liters of water, calculate the molarity of the resulting solution. So they are asking me to solve for molarity. That's important to note. And they are giving me the moles right there. Um, by the way, we know sodium hydroxide is NaOH. That might or might not be needed, but we have it if we need it. And they gave me the um, liters, which was 1.5 liters of water. So to do this problem, we're just going to write molarity equals mole over liter. We ask ourselves, do we have what we need to plug in? And this problem is really straightforward. They just gave everything I need right to me. No conversions needed. I have 3.0 moles divided by 1.5 liters. And if I divide 3 by 1.5, that is 2 0.0 molar sodium hydroxide. We do want to label what it is. Just think if you were making this solution in a lab, you would make a label and label the container. That's very important, and that's what your label would look like. And just a reminder, when you see that big M, the word that comes out of your mouth is molar. So that's what I would call probably the easiest type of molarity problem that you will ever see. Honestly, they don't get much more difficult than this, but that's going to be our easiest, easiest type. So now let's look at another example. 35 grams of NaCl occupy a volume of 2,500 milliliters. What is the molarity of the solution? Once again, they are asking me to solve for molarity. This time, they gave me grams, and this is almost as good as them giving me moles because I can convert from gram to mole. So I'm going to label this as my moles, but knowing I'm going to have to convert that. And then the volume is 2,500 milliliters. Um, also going to need to convert that, but um, that's an easy metric conversion because, remember, I have to have my units in mole per liter. So um, let's just go ahead and take care of this business. 35.0 grams of NaCl. We're just going from gram to mole, so we're going to divide by the molar mass. And if you add the mass of sodium, which is 23.0, to chlorine, which is 35.45, there's one of each, that is 58.45 grams of NaCl per mole. Grams cancel. If I divide 35.0 by 58.45, I'm going to get 0 0.60, and I rounded up, moles of NaCl. So that's actually my moles right here that I'm going to use in the problem. I also have 2,500 milliliters I know you guys could do this in your head, no problem, but I'm just going to write it out because I can't help myself. And just in case you're not sure, you just divide by 1,000 because there's 1,000 milliliters per liter. Again, that easy metric conversion, and that's going to be 2.5 liters. So they gave me moles, and they gave me liters, sort of. I just had to do a li uh, little quick conversion to get there. You guys can totally handle that. That's easy. So we know that molarity is mole per liter. 
I have converted both of those. They are ready to plug in. So I have 0 0.60 moles divided by 2.5 liters and 0.6 divided by 2.5 is 0 0.24. And what do we say when we see that big M? We say molar, N-A-C-L. And again, your reminder, say molar. So that was almost as easy as the first problem. You just had to do a little housekeeping up front, and those are things that we have been doing for a long time. All right, let's take a look at example number three. So at this point, you may want to pause the video, write down the problem, try it yourself, and then um, we'll go through it together and we'll see how you did. 80 grams of calcium nitrate is used to create 1.45 molar solution. What is the volume of the resulting solution? Okay, so this one's a little bit different. Um, they're asking me for volume, and since I'm dealing with molarity and they didn't specify otherwise, I'm going to assume they want liters there. They could have asked you for milliliters and made you jump through an extra hoop. They didn't ask, so we're just going to leave it in liters. So it looks like I've got 80 grams of calcium nitrate. I know I can't work with grams, so I'm going to go ahead and convert that to moles real quick. So 80.0 grams calcium nitrate. Again, this is just a little housekeeping, getting everything in order. Now, if you add the mass of two times three, six oxygens, to the mass of two nitrogens, because that's two right there, and one calcium, you're going to get 164.1 grams. If um, that step was a little confusing, just go back and look at my video on calculating molar mass. It's super easy. So if I divide 80 by 164, I'm going to get 0 0.49 moles of calcium nitrate. So there's my moles. They gave me molarity this time. So I'm used to working with this formula. Molarity is mole per liter. But this time they are actually asking me to solve for liters. And if you'll remember, that's just a little basic algebra. And if you rearrange this formula, you're going to get liter is mole over molarity. So that's what we're going to work with. Liter is mole over molarity. Now, my moles were 0 0.49. That's what I found right up here. So I'm going to say 0. 0.49 moles divided by the 1.45 molar that they gave me. Now, I want to say something about this. Molarity is mole per liter, so when you divide mole by molarity, the units actually work out like this. You're dividing mole by mole per liter because that is molarity. So you see how those moles cancel and you actually are left with liters at the end. So this does work. A lot of students see this and they're like, what is the unit on that? How does that cancel? Keep in mind that uh, molarity is derived from mole divided by liter. So if you break that down, you can see where it crosses out and you are indeed left with liters. So we're gonna divide 0 0.49 by 1.45 and that's gonna give me 0 0.34 liters of total solution. And the abbreviation for solution, feel free to use that, is S-O-L-N. So this time, they're, you know, this is pretty hands-on. They're just saying, hey, if you dissolve 80 grams of calcium nitrate um, and you want a 1.45 molar solution, if that was your goal, like what is your final volume going to be? And it would be 0.34 liters. So this is something that you may actually use hands-on in a lab. Let's look at one more example. 
This is probably a little bit of overkill, but you know, if three problems are good, four's even better. So again, this might be a place where you would like to pause the video and try it on your own, see how you do. What mass of potassium sulfate would be needed to make two liters of a 1.75 molar solution? Now they're asking me for mass, which means I'm actually going to have to saw for moles and then I'm gonna convert my moles to grams at the end of the problem. Again, super easy. So um, they're asking me to saw for moles this time. And I know that if I rearrange the formula for molarity, mole equals molarity times liters. And you know, if molarity is mole over liter and you cross multiply, you're gonna get mole is molarity times liter. So this is the formula I need to plug into. Molarity times liters, okay? You don't have to use parentheses there. I just thought that might make that a little more clear. So I need to plug in molarity and liters, which they actually gave me. They gave me liters. They gave me molarity. So let's just start there. Mole equals molarity, which is 1.75. I'm going to break that down, mole over liter, so you can see the units cancel times liters, which is 2.0 liters, liters cancel, and 1.75 times two is 3.5. So I have 3.5 moles of potassium sulfate, which is K2SO4. Now, here's the only thing that I've got to deal with. They specifically said, give me mass. That means they want grams, they don't want moles. Maybe the person who's doing this actually needs to get their hands on it and weigh it out in the lab. So we just need to make that a little bit easier for them. So we have got 3.5 moles of K2SO4. We're gonna use molar mass. Four oxygens plus one sulfur plus two potassiums. That is a mass of 100 and 74.26 grams per mole. Remember when we do gram mole or mole gram, it's always per one mole when we're using that molar mass conversion. And if I multiply 3.5 by 174.26, I'm gonna get 609.91 grams of potassium sulfate. So let's say that I was doing an experiment and it specifically said for this experiment, you need two liters of a 1.75 molar solution of potassium sulfate. I literally could go way out 609.91 grams of potassium sulfate and I could dissolve it in enough water to bring the final volume up to two liters and I would have a perfect 1.75 molar solution, and I would have two liters of it, of the potassium sulfate. So again, molarity is not hard. I just want you to think about it as how much solute, how much stuff is dissolved per liter of solution. And if you have, if you need more than one liter of solution, like you did for this problem, you can easily adjust that. So that is your um, lesson on molarity. I hope that that has helped clarify some things for you if you're reviewing. Hope it was easy to follow if you were learning it for the first time.